Today I'm in the process of clearing this room, ready for prep work to start painting and uh, restoring this room back to its former glory. We haven't really done much work apart from, we obviously put in our wood burning stove uh, last year and we put the sandstone on this fireplace. And the wonderful thing about the sandstone on the fireplace is that it actually came from the Veterans Library at the Mount A University. When it was um, torn down and, re and they rebuilt that building, um, the sandstone was salvaged and this is the sum of the sandstone that was on that building. So it's still coming from a historic building and it's fantastic that it's now in the manor. Um, but other than that, we actually haven't done anything to the paintwork or any of the trim. And, and it needs, the, the bones are really good. It needs obviously redecorating. Um, we're gonna, you know, strip down all the, the trim and redo it. Uh, we're gonna give some, do some, you know, places where it needs a little TLC, we're gonna do that. Um, and obviously the plaster work needs some work as well. Um, but we're gonna start working on that. But obviously the first job is to get everything cleared, get the furniture out so I can start um, putting a primer on the, color blocking primer on the walls and because we're gonna change the color. Um, but obviously the main feature in this room is our beautiful um, square grand piano. Now until we moved here, to be honest, I didn't even realize that square grand pianos existed. Uh, I always assumed grand pianos were the traditional shape. Uh, but I discovered once we moved here and the piano was in that property that there is a thing called a square grand piano. And this one is a William Bourne. And we've been told that it was built in 1842, which is actually the same year as uh, this old, the old part of the manor was built. And uh, it wasn't here originally. It wasn't here in the 1840s. Um, but it, apparently the story goes that it was actually going to be used and destroyed and the wood used for pencils. And someone saved it and brought it into the manor and it's been here ever since. And to be honest with you, it will probably always be here because it's so big and so heavy, I'm not sure how we'd get it out again. Um, but it's just such a beautiful feature of this room that I couldn't imagine this room without it. So all the design and all the colours and the textures that I've been working on, it seems like forever for this room, kind of all are around this one feature, which is the piano. Um, so I'm really excited to see this space transform and uh, to, so we can make it into something really special. One of the most beautiful parts of this piano is, as you can see, as I'm just cleaning this slightly on the top, is that it is all hand painted with this beautiful design, which is just lovely. You can see a little more up here. And it all needs a really, really good, very, very careful clean. So that's something that I'm going to be doing um, once we've got all the uh, renovation and uh, the work done. And then I will do a really careful clean underneath all these wires um, and get this top looking fantastic. But it's just so beautiful with the detail and the hand painting. So I'm excited once uh, all the work's done in the room to be able to actually uh, get this cleaned up and be able to showcase it uh, on the uh, top of the piano. Sadly, as you can hear, it's not in tune. Some of the uh, keys don't actually work. Um, and um, from our little bit of research, it doesn't look like we are going to be able to get it tuned and playable. So it looks beautiful, but isn't really um, practical for playing the piano. But it looks so great in this room. It's, it's, it would be lovely to be able to play it, but uh, it still is a very special piece and uh, we're thrilled to have it as part of our music room. Um, and yeah, but we won't be doing much piano playing on it. 
This is the old new post that we've picked up that is going at the top of our stairs in our library. And it's got a very, very rough finish uh, from many, many years of use. And so I'm just using a sanding block and sanding it all down ready for us to refinish it. Um, so it just looks a little more, we want it to look aged and old and used. Um, but I'm just taking off those rough edges so that we can kind of just refinish it um, so it has, it brings out all the character and uh, keeps it keeps it good for the rest for many years to come. So we want to put a, a nice top coat on it to protect it as well. So um, I'm just, like I say, I'm just using a sanding block and getting all the rough edges off and then uh, we'll start the refinishing process. Once the new posts are refinished, we'll be putting back the original banister and railings, uh, which is here. We've taken this off um, and I'm gonna repaint the spindles and we will be putting that back onto the, the uh, new posts when they are refinished. I'm just finishing uh, the, these pieces that are gonna go on the uh, vanity in our family bathroom. And I decided after painting this piece and the bottom pieces here in gold that I um, am putting it or placing it on the vanity. I decided that it needed a little bit more at the top, so I've decided to paint this top little piece gold too. So I'm just adding this on before I put the top coat on, um, and then we can kind of put the vanity and the mirror all together. a little bit more on the top and with the mirror on the wall as well I think that's going to work really quite well in our family bathroom I uh, we've now ordered our candles for the vanity so you'll have to wait to see uh, until they arrive to see which ones we actually chose uh, the mirror has been top coated and is ready to go up. And now our next decision is what we should do with the ceiling. Now, right now we have it obviously white and we are gonna have a beautiful chandelier right in the middle. You can see where the light uh, is at the moment. It's gonna be there um, and it's gonna have the gold accents to match uh, the gold feet on the tub and the accents on the vanity. But the question is, do we leave the ceiling in white or do we paint it? Now, it'll also have a nice ceiling rose um, that's gonna be off-white around the chandelier as well. But I'm just trying to decide whether I make keep the ceiling white or whether I paint it a darker color. And the nice thing about doing a darker color is that it would obviously accent uh, the off-white uh, ceiling rose and the chandelier, um, but I could also leave it in white as well. And I would love to know what your thoughts are. So let me comment and let me know. Do you think I should leave the ceiling in white or should I paint it a color that would obviously tone in beautifully with the, uh, the duck egg blue I've got in my vanity and the black and white on the tiles. So I want something that really complements that. Um, and then obviously we'll make the chandelier and the ceiling rose pop. So let me know what your thoughts are. Should I do white or should I do color? This week I've been moving a lot of furniture around the house, trying to organize. And in that process, um, this chaise lounge has ended up in front of this window. And uh, we have it covered so the dogs can uh, sit on it too. But I think it might be my new favorite spot. Uh, it's just such a beautiful place. To the light is lovely. Um, so I'm enjoying a cup of tea. And while I'm here, I thought I would give you a little bit of a heads up because now that 
things with COVID have started to settle down a bit um, and things are starting to get a little bit uh, more back to normal, we are starting to have more events at the manor. And we have a few coming up in the next few months that I wanted to give you a heads up about uh, so you're the first to know about them and you can get your tickets. The first one we have is actually at the beginning of October. It's a two-day fusion furniture workshop Really, it's an experience. It's with uh, the amazing Painted Pineapple in Moncton. And I'm so excited to be working with them because uh, Lisa has taught me everything I know about uh, painting my furniture, doing uh, stencils, the different effects. So all the things that you see me doing in the manor, I've learned pretty much from her. Um, so I'm so excited. They're going to be here and we're doing a two-day workshop where they will walk you through how to paint and refinish some kind of piece of furniture that you have, something big, so maybe it's a hutch or a vanity, um, something substantial. So you'll have two full days, you're going to get a goodie bag with all sorts of goodies worth over $250, you'll get lunch, you'll get um, drinks and, and little special delights that we're going to uh, serve over the weekend, you'll get one-on-one -on -one advice and tuition from Lisa and her team on exactly how to paint and do all the different effects and trust me they know what they're doing and it is once you learn from them it's easy it still amazes me what I've been able to achieve based on what they've taught me uh, so you'll be able to do that all surrounded by the manor um, it is gonna be you get all the supplies all the pain everything's included so 2nd and 3rd of October that uh, furniture experience is gonna be posted probably in the next day or so. So watch out for that one. We also have a second event in October uh, on the 21st and that's with the Greater Moncton Women's Progress Club. And that's actually a fundraiser. Um, and we're really excited because they're gonna be bring in a taste of the community. They're gonna have local food and drink uh, vendors and artisans here. You'll be able to come and enjoy tasting all their food and drink and again experiencing that all inside the manor um, you'll be able to see all the work we've been doing because by then we'll have a lot more work down downstairs finished so you'll be able to see that firsthand um, and it's they've got some really exciting um, vendors and food and drink coming uh, so that's an amazing opportunity for you to pick up a ticket and come and join us on the 21st of October again it will, will be posted on our website uh, on our Facebook so keep your eyes tuned uh, because that one I'm going to be sharing today um, on Facebook and we also have a third event coming up at the on the 4th of December and that is a Christmas workshop again with painted pineapple they are going to be doing something just so gorgeous so they're going to be putting together something where you'll come for the day and you'll be able to go home with a variety of, of crafts and um, items that you've made during the day that make this beautiful vintage Christmas Santa stoop so kind of anything you need for that kind of entrance hallway I think they're going to be doing a wreath um, and all sorts of other goodies so that one again is going to be coming out soon and we're so excited to see people in the manor enjoying the space um, and I love the fact that we've got furniture we've got Christmas we've got the fundraiser with the Progress Club the Women's Progress Club in Moncton and we're just going to have it's just going to be so much fun so like I say, they will all be posted on our website, they'll all be posted on our Facebook page, so keep your eyes open for all those events, and trust me, there's gonna be lots more coming. And don't forget, we also have our Christmas market on the 20, uh, 20th and the 21st of November. So there is stuff going on every month, right the way through uh, to Christmas, and there will be more coming. So I can't wait to tell you more, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get back to work. Um, and I will see you on our next episode of the Ladies with Manor Diaries.